well dear viewers thank you for joining us in this video we are going to see how your car is driven how your car is powered and how your car is being propelled stay tuned this type of internal combustion engine it is a mechanical machine that is used to convert chemical energy of the fuel into heat energy and then that heat energy is converted to mechanical energy that energy is the one that we are using to propel the vehicle there are different engine mechanisms that are utilized to make this happen well basically we can divide them into two parts the crank gear mechanism and the valve gear mechanism well when it comes to crank gear mechanism the crank gear mechanism of an internal combustion engine consists of those parts which convert the chemical energy of the fuel into heat energy and then to mechanical energy. As air fuel mixture is burned inside the cylinder during the power stroke, that chemical energy of the fuel is converted to heat energy and due to the chemical reaction. As a result, the temperature and the pressure inside the cylinder rapidly rises. This high pressure of burned gases exert large amount of force on the piston head. The piston is then forced to move from its upper position, known as TDC, down to its lower position, also known as BDC. This piston motion by means of the connecting rod is transferred to the crankshaft and then to the fly, to the gearbox, and finally it goes to the drive rods. The crank mechanism of a combustion engine consists of parts like the piston, the connecting rod, the crankshaft, and the flywheel. The crankshaft serves to transform the reciprocating up and down motion of the piston into a rotary motion at the piston. The piston serves to transfer the combustion pressure via the connecting rod and crankshaft to the power transmission units and finally to the drive wheel. In addition, the piston must perform suction of the air fuel mixture into the cylinder. It has to compress the admitted in air fuel mixture and then the exhaust after combustion it has to be discharged that is also accomplished by the upward motion of the piston the power from the piston is then transferred to the crankshaft by the connecting rod the crankshaft transforms the reciprocating motion of the piston into rotational movement valve gear mechanism when it comes to valve gear mechanism the purpose of the valve gear mechanism is to control the timing and duration of admittance of air fuel mixture into the cylinder. It also controls the timing and duration of exhaust gas removal from the cylinder. What are the components? The valve gear mechanism includes components like the camshaft, the valve lifters, the push rod, the rocker arm and the rocker arm shaft, valve springs, intake and exhaust valves. Operation of the valve gear mechanism. Well, the camshaft is driven by the crankshaft through a timing chain, a timing gear, or a timing belt. When the camshaft is rotating, there are cam lobes on the camshaft that will push the valve lifter upward. That motion will be transmitted through the push rod to the rocker arm. And the rocker arm push the valve stem to open either the intake valve or the exhaust valve. Then when the camshaft further rotates, as the cam lobe runs away from the valve lifter, closing of the valves is performed by the valve springs. Now let us see how power is produced in a four-stroke gasoline engine. What is taking place? Let's see each one by one. In the induction stroke or the intake stroke, piston is moving down inside the cylinder. At the same time, the inlet valve is opened and a mixture of air and fuel is admitted into the cylinder, which is partially vacuumed due to the descent of the piston. Just after the piston reaches the end of its downward stroke, the intake valve will be closed again. At this point, the mixture of air and fuel is sealed in the cylinder. Now, the intake stroke is followed by the compression stroke. The compression stroke is where the piston is moving upward, compressing the mixture of air and fuel into a small space above the piston, which is also called the combustion chamber. When the piston has reached the top of its stroke, 
large quantity of air fuel mixture is now tightly packed into a small space. Cylinder pressure will rise, cylinder temperature will also increase. At the end of this compression stroke, a spark is initiated by the ignition system, causing the compressed air fuel mixture to ignite and start burning. This will lead us to the power stroke. Immediately after the compression stroke is completed, the mixture inside the cylinder is ignited by the spark plugs. Cylinder temperature and pressure increases rapidly. The burning and expansion of gases is so rapid that the piston is forced down. This is the power stroke. And this is the stroke that provides the power that will propel the vehicle. When the piston is approaching the bottom of the power stroke, exhaust valve is opened, thereby allowing the burned gas to skip from the cylinder. During the exhaust stroke, with the exhaust valve already open, piston starts moving up, sweeping the burned gas out of the cylinder. When the piston reaches TDC, it will be ready to descend again, leading to another intake stroke. This is the intake valve, now intake stroke, compression, we have power for this cylinder, now exhaust, intake, compression, power, exhaust. Now for the engine to perform all these strokes smoothly, there has to be some systems that will assist. We have the starting system. We have the intake system, we have the fuel system, the ignition system, the lubrication system, the exhaust system, the charging system, and the cooling system. Now the power that is produced inside the cylinder after it has been converted to rotary motion by the crankshaft will be delivered to the flywheel. Now there is a clutch that is attached to the flywheel. The purpose of the clutch is to temporarily disconnect power flow to the transmission gearbox when gears are selected. What does the transmission gearbox do? The transmission gearbox allows the vehicle to be driven at different speed and different torque proportion. It will also allow the vehicle to remain stationary while the engine is still running. That is when the gear is in neutral. Then power from the gearbox will proceed to the drive shafts. What are the drive shafts responsibility? They transmit torque. They allow change in length of the drive system when the vehicle is being driven on an irregular surface. They will allow different drive shaft angles when the vehicle is driven. They will also tend to reduce rotary vibration by using different types of joints, like universal joints, for example. They are there to reduce vibration. Slip joints are there to compensate for length variation as the dri driven wheels are going up and down due to road irregularity. Then finally, the power from the propeller shaft is delivered to the differential. The purpose of the differential is it reduces the speed from the propeller shaft and it will increase the torque. It will split the power that is coming from the propeller shaft into the left and the right wheels. It will change the direction of rotation by 90 degrees. It will allow the left and right wheels to be driven at different speeds. It distributes the torque among the driven wheels. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos of this kind.